Hey, welcome back to One Commentary. I'm Mauricio, and I'm here to talk about whatever I want to talk about, and you can't stop me. Now, let me ask you a question. Let me get deep in that brain of yours real quick. Yeah, I'm inside you right now. Have you ever seen something and just realized, holy shit, if I had money, I could make something so much better? Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. Crunchy lore. Crunchy, Crunchyroll Originals. Crunchyroll is a purveyor of anime in the United States, and sometimes they help fund the production of anime, or they fully fund the production of anime. An example of a Crunchyroll original is Dr. Stone, and if you've seen it, then you would know it's an absolute banger. Another example would be Tower of God, which is produced by both Crunchyroll and Webtoon. So one would think, hey, Crunchyroll isn't that insane, right? They're pretty crazy, but they're not that insane. They wouldn't make a terrible anime, a Crunchyroll original. As soon as the trailer for the Crunchyroll original X-Arm anime came out, it was dragged by not just the anime community, uh, but, but the community as well. Like, uh, us as a society. We live in a society. The trailer sucks d Being someone that studies 3D animation, specifically the animation part of the process, as well as being someone that is making their own animated series, Interstellar Ranger Commence, Link in the description. I was appalled by how this anime looked. Uh, so now I'm gonna watch the first episode. Oh boy. Now... I feel like I'm forgetting something. Hi there, I'm an aspiring filmmaker and I want to make animated movies and TV shows that look like this and uh, and not like this. And that's why I use Skillshare. See, Skillshare is a great place to learn about filmmaking, 3D animation, 2D animation, cooking, and lots more. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for someone like you. There's no ads and is also incredibly affordable. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Check out this awesome class, Painting Light and Shadow, the basics for portraits and characters by Gabriella Bricky. It's extremely helpful for figuring out how to render your art. Now the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so you can explore your creativity. I've actually used Skillshare to learn how to use After Effects for my own projects. So thanks, Skillshare. Now remember the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Now let's watch episode 1 of X-Arm and try not to cringe. When, when we're done watching this episode, we're actually gonna go into who the heck made this. And uh, I want to know. I really, I need to know. I need to know the truth. A few moments later. F why does it look like that? Okay, so it starts with a 3D model of the Earth, which is rotating. It looks terrible, by the way, but not just that. When they zoom into the Earth, it, it stops rotating. It's so jarring, I'm not excited. I mean, so far, this doesn't look that bad, so... Oh, fuck! Why does it look like that? No! This is one of the worst OPs I've ever seen in my entire life. So it looks like they got the 3D models, not even like really posed very well. Like if you see the main character, uh, he looks like sh**. And he's just standing there, and then they just rotated his 3D model. It looks like this. I tried to recreate this, and it took me like 30 minutes. Oh, fuck no, that zoom in is trash. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> So the thing that they're doing here, it seems like they don't have the budget to make a 3D character for every single character in the show. So for the characters that are not in 3D, they're just animating them in 2D. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's plenty of anime out there that mix 2D and 3D. Take the new season of Attack on Titan, take Beastars as well. But this, uh, this just looks terrible. And one of the biggest flaws is that the 3D characters consistently keep moving. There's a difference between animation in 3D and animation in 2D because in 2D you can just have characters standing still and it looks fine. But in 3D, even if a character is just idling, they still have to kind of breathe and shift and maybe look around with their eyes. So it looks like the 3D characters in here are doing that, but doing that breaks the immersion because you have 2D characters right next to them. This looks so bad. No, they did not do that. This is so bad, dude. I want to cry. That's how bad, it, like whenever something is so bad, I almost like my eyes almost start tearing up. It's so weird. Yo, oh, I don't know who directed this. I'm so sorry. You're very bad at your job. Like even in this shot where the older brother is talking to the main character, he is smack in the middle of the frame. Any amateur would know to put him to the left 
so he isn't being completely obscured by the main character here. So it feels like more of a shot reverse shot for the next shot here, but it, it just, it, 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 uh, this is crazy because they probably have so much money to spend on this show, but they're utilizing all this money in like the worst way because it looks terrible. It looks terrible, dude. Hey, this is, this right is right. a f***ing terrible shot. Look at it. Look at it, dude. Oh my God. Move him closer to the left. Like there's no, I don't understand. Ooh. He's dead. He died. He got run over by a truck. It was great animation. It was a... It was a still. It was, that, was, that was hot. Okay, we're finally getting to the action here. Let's do it. She froze. Did you see that? Her animation ended and the model just froze in place. It looks like either a rookie animator animated this or they just got mocap and didn't clean it up at all. And it's got to be one of those two because it looks really bad. I will say though, that android, <laughs> girl, she can kick me in the face anytime she wants. <laughs> also, they have no expressions at all. <laughs> They fight like this. They did like an artificial zoom in. Like, you know, you can just make another camera, right? They just got the rendered shot and made it like, like this. Like it's a YouTube video. Like they just edited it. Like, you see, I just zoomed in. I can zoom it again. You're in a 3D environment, dude. You can place the camera wherever you want. I just realized I've been forgetting to talk about the plot because I've been watching this thing with my jaw gaped open, just not comprehending at all how this is a thing. Basically, the main character, I forget his name, he died. He got run over by a truck. Now, this guy hates robots. He has a big brother that loves robots. He probably f***s robots all the time. He makes sexy robots. If, if, if you're making sexy robots, you f*** them. So then he dies, and now it's 2030. And I'm assuming this one is an android, and this one is a real person, and they're stealing an X-arm. That's that's all we got. It's it's kind of vague so far. We'll see. It's actually a shame because the voice actors are doing a great job. And so seeing competent voice work in a show that is absolutely incompetent is just a bummer really. X-Arm is a manga. Like most anime are, it comes from a manga, and seeing this be the adaptation to this manga, which is, if anything, it is at least nicely illustrated. It is visually striking. It looks cool. So seeing it translated to the small screen like this is really embarrassing, and I feel really bad for honestly everyone involved, because I don't think anyone wants this in their portfolio. Jesus Christ, you don't have to get that close to her, man. Either zoom in the shot, or stand further apart. God, that effect looks like shit, man. Again, what pisses me off the most about this thing is that they had such a, such a budget for this thing, right? Like, you have money, and this is what you put out, dude. Like, damn, man. What I would, what I would want to do with the amount of money they had, it's, it's honestly really... Depressing. It really is. <laughs> what just happened? What just happened? Did she kick him? There was no sound effect to kick him. <laughs> Did he just move to the side? Is he just patiently waiting? What's happening? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> exactly! I want to see too. I can't see a damn thing. Are you ready? Are you ready for the greatest action scene of all time? You're not. I love that the entire time, the only voice acting you hear is just the guy, because the girl is an android and she's barely grunting, so you can just hear the guy going like, <laughs> At the end of the day, it looks like the good guy is an enemy of all mankind. Find out next week what happens in, in X-Arm, because we're all very excited for that. 
Um, I'm never watching this again. One eternity later. All right, so it's been like two hours. I've been looking into this anime and I want to answer the question, why does it look like shit? Also, a lot of this I'm pulling from an anime news network article written by Callum May. He was able to compile a list of people who've worked on the anime and let me tell you that the director um, has never worked in anime ever. The director, Yoshikatsu Kimura, has only directed live-action stuff, and all of his live-action stuff uh, is very mediocre, in my opinion. The production committee behind X-Arm actually got Kimura because of his live-action work, thinking that because it's in 3D, it's better to have a director that works in the 3D space, which doesn't really make sense. There's directors that work specifically in 3D animation, so why would you get a director that has only ever worked in live-action? And also, why would you get a director that doesn't even want to work with people that have worked in animation before? Kimura specified that he was only going to be working with his staff that works in live action instead of getting people that work in anime when making an anime. It doesn't make any sense at all. Like filmmaking is filmmaking, you know, Brad Bird can work in 2D, 3D, live action, but he's always going to be working with people that are specializing in those things to make those movies. He's not going to get like his DP from Mission Impossible to do Ratatouille 2. It doesn't make any sense. Now the animation studio is Visual Flight. And that's also a brain dead decision because they've never worked in anything anime. They've only done this random dance demo with these anime characters. They also did not animate the dance. It's very important. Visual Flight seems to focus primarily on modeling and environments that are realistic, not really anything cartoony. They even did this demo here, and that's just knights fighting, and it looks pretty realistic, you know? If you actually analyze it, you'll be able to see similarities between X-Arm's look and this thing's look, like from how it's rendered to how the environments are presented, etc. Now if you go to the end credits of the video, you'll see that there's an animation section. There's only three people in there, and there's no mention of motion capture. Usually if there's motion capture involved, there's a motion capture segment in the end credits, but there is none. So maybe they included motion capture in the animation section, but more likely there is no motion capture in the video. The animation is simple enough to not have to be motion captured, and if it was cleaned up motion capture, it would look a lot better than what the end result is. This leads me to believe that Visual Flight doesn't really dabble in motion capture. And I'm thinking that, you know, since the anime dance is not an animation that was done by them, they've never animated really anything with motion capture. And X-Arm is a motion capture anime. So how the f would you choose these people to do the, the anime, I don't, I don't understand. Now Takahito Ochi is the action director, so at least they have an actual action director to direct the action, which they're gonna be doing with stunts and doing the motion capture for it. Uh, so why does it look so bad? Well, I'll tell you, I've actually been taking a motion capture class, so let's talk about motion capture. Motion capture is literally the art of capturing motion with these suits. So actors put on motion capture suits, which have dots on them. They're in a room with a bunch of cameras and they basically just act out. The cameras track all the dots on them and that's transferred into animation. The issue is that motion capture on its own isn't enough. I actually had a homework assignment, which was to clean up motion captured animation. And uh, that was so f***ing difficult, man. So the problem is that sometimes dots aren't tracked correctly, or sometimes when an actor is scrunched up, there's no way a camera can get that dot information, so the dot is just missing. So sometimes when there's an animation, a specific point will just move out of the frame, and you have to find that point, fix it, and put it back, and manually animate at that point. So there has to be cleanup in motion capture, and I feel like since Visual Flight isn't experienced enough to do this cleanup because they haven't really done motion capture, then it looks like this. It ends up being unfinished animation with missing elements that make it look jarring and lanky and weird. I genuinely believe that other than the production committee, Yoshikatsu Kimura is the one to blame for why X-Arm turned out so bad. He had the chance to work with people who know how to work in anime, but he decided to work with people he knew that work with him in live action, and that's incredibly dumb. And as trashy and honestly kind of funny as X-Arm is, it's ultimately disappointing because so much money 
went into this thing. And for me personally, it's a bummer because I'm making this animation and I'm trying to make it look as good as possible. I have like zero budget. This is a small channel. We don't have much money at all. I'm in college too. It fucking sucks. And so these people got a shit ton of money and that's what they put out. That's disappointing to me. So yeah, that's X-Arm and uh, that's pain. I want to thank DizzyWiz for this absolutely amazing art of Hope Griffin from the anime Interstellar Ranger Commence, the one I'm making. Thank you so much for it, it looks awesome. Also, if you didn't know, I'm actually wearing- oh, Jesus f Just broke my computer. I'm actually wearing an Interstellar Ranger Commence shirt. You can find this on the Crowdmade shop, the link is in the description. And of course, check out Interstellar Ranger Commence, I'm doing my best on it. Uh, it's- it's tough, man, but, you know, it, I think it's looking great so far. The trailer is out, so check out that new trailer. And uh, thanks so much for watching. I want to thank you patrons so much for the support. And now for the Patreon question of the video. So Yenzel Rojo asks, what has been your favorite character to write in IRC? And I gotta say, you know, Hope Griffin is, is a lot of fun to write. She's the main character, but she has a lot of baggage. And I've loved to deal... I love to deal with that baggage, it's so fun. Um, it's Gireo, which is the deuterogonist, which I voice, who kind of sounds like this, you know? It's a lot of fun to, to put your characters through shit and see how they, they come out of it. And uh, the last one would be Maria Long. Um, and the reason I love writing for her is that she is just a massive, massive pervert. She has no filter, and I love that about her. And um, Cass Thompson is the one that voices her does an incredible job bringing her to life and she has a lot of fun with it. Thank you so much Jens for the question. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you don't know what a chad is and you want to join the chad nation, the greatest nation in the history of the planet, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and you will instantly become a chad. And uh, chads have lots of benefits like uh, being epic and pro gamers. Like if you just hop on Fortnite, you will instantly win. You'll instantly get that victory royale. It's crazy that I, I've tried it. Trust me, it's true. I'm not lying. I'm definitely, definitely not lying. Thank you so much for coming to the table and I'll see you all next time.